All right, some more bottom fishing with Zachary Carabell, Jeff Kleintop, and Peter Schiff. One place there's not a lot of bottom fishing is the bank sector. We have a quote from Senator Chuck Schumer who talked earlier today on CNBC. Please take a listen. A much better solution, in my opinion, which is somewhat modeled on the bad bank, is not for the government to buy the assets, but rather to guarantee them and guarantee them below an amount that the banks now have them in their books. So if the asset was originally 100, the bank is valuing it at 80. It would be guaranteed if it fell below 65. All right, Zachary Carabell, were you tuned into that one? Did you hear it? I heard it. I want to get your response to it. A, what do you think? But B, what's it mean for stocks? Because I worry a little bit that the stock market, the bank aspects, but maybe the whole market, wants somehow thinks it's going to get this magical silver bullet, a government-backed bad bank that's going to relieve commercial banks of all the toxic assets, and we're all going to live happily ever after with new loans. You know, I think unless Congress uh, focuses a little bit more on the underlying issues of the mortgage resets and the million-plus or could be a trillion dollars worth of mortgages that may reset this year, that's as much of an urgency that no one seems to be talking about. You know, I don't. I know there's a lot of debate about bad bank, not so bad bank, what to do, creating some sort of backstop where assets don't continue to get eroded and downgraded that have some sort of intrinsic worth because, as you've pointed out many times, 93% of Americans are current on their mortgages. Yep. A lot of the assets in these toxic assets aren't so toxic. So finding a way to stop that is, in fact, essential. And I'm a little bit worried that people are going to be just arguing for the next four weeks about this rather than creating some sort of foundation uh, so we can move on. Well, Peter Schiff, what do you make of that? I mean, it sounds from what, se what President Obama said yesterday, what Senator Schumer, who's an insider on this, said today, there is not going to be a government-backed bad bank to buy toxic assets. And I might add editorially, I say hallelujah. But I want to ask you, Peter, uh, if you get a separate breakout into some kind of uh, special investment vehicle by the banks of their lousy assets and the FDIC and or the Fed guarantees them, is that a solution, Peter? I don't think so. I mean, as an investor, I still wouldn't want to participate in the banks. I still think that whatever value is there is being confiscated by the government, and I think there's a lot more problems. You know, you, you mentioned earlier in the program uh, the rise in interest rates. I, I don't think that's a good thing. I mean, if you look at what's happening in the bond market, this is only, we've finished January, and this is already the worst year in history for Treasuries. And if you look at the momentum there, I mean, we're at 3.6 percent now in the 30-year. We were at 2.5 percent at the end of December. Uh, we could be back up at 4.5 percent pretty quickly. And if we take out 5.5% before the end of the year, uh, that's really going to create additional problems for the financial institutions because now we're going to have rising interest rates uh, and not falling interest rates. And that's going to make all these bad loans much more problematic. Well, that's an interesting point, Jeff Kleintop. I'd like you to react to what Pierre Schiff just said. Now, there's two ways to go, or maybe both. One is that those rates in the Treasury market are backing up because the Treasury is going to have to finance the largest borrowing in the history of the planet Earth. Okay. It's also possible, though, Jeff, that there's a credit thaw going on and the rush to riskless investing is coming to an end and it could mean a big, big stock market rally ahead. Which do you choose? I think it's more the latter, Larry. Even though even though yields in the Treasury market did move up the l last month, we saw spreads narrow, right? I mean, we actually saw yields come down for high-grade corporate debt and high yield in, in some cases. That's a sign of healing in the credit markets. I think what you're seeing in the Treasury market is in part a flight away from quality and into some of these asset classes. That's where we prefer to take our risk. In the corporate bond market, we find very attractive yields there. You're seeing more money move into there and out of Treasury. No doubt Treasuries are in part reacting to the outlook for issuance, in but effect, I think a Jeff, lot more has to go In with, effect, uh, Treasury rates are rising, but corporate rates are falling. That's exactly I mean, the that's point, Larry, which is why thing. it's a sign of healing. Peter Schiff, Absolutely. Uh, that's got to be a good thing. If all rates were rising, yeah, I'd say that all hell's breaking loose, but it's not. Corporate rates well, and spreads are narrowing across the board, short, medium, and long, while the Treasury rates are rising. That, I would say that's a shift into some risk-taking. Well,
Well, we'll see how long that lasts. I mean, it's my thinking that all rates are going to rise. Sure, I think the spreads are going to narrow between corporate bonds and government bonds, but ultimately it's going to happen in a rising interest rate environment. And rates are rising for a number of reasons. Inflation is one of them. As the dollar starts to roll over, you know, this dollar rally is fading. As it loses steam, the dollar is going to plunge. That's going to push rates up. And people are going to start to think about purchasing power, not just their money coming back, but what the money is going to buy. And that's going to, you know, cause interest but rates to really rise for all evidence. borrowers. You, all right, yeah. you have been a dollar bear for a good long while. Uh, some of your critics have jumped on that. You wanted to buy the foreign stocks. It didn't pan out, et cetera. Some of your critics have jumped on that. But when you say the dollar rally is about to end, I, I, I don't really see any evidence of that. And when you say inflation is about to take off, yeah. I mean, I do think that there is the end of commodity deflation. I think one could make that case. I regard that yeah. as a plus. But we just got an inflation yeah. report on the uh, uh, consumer spending deflator. What is this yeah. dropping at about an 8% annual rate? Yeah, what's happening, Larry? First of all, foreign stocks panned out well for me from 2000 to 2008. They didn't do that well last year, but I think that's already reversed. If you see what's happened so far in 2009, we're back with the foreign market substantially outperforming the U.S. again. But what you have, we've had an inflation problem all along. It's just that you have two counterbalancing forces. You have inflation, which is driving prices higher, but now you have deleveraging, you have bankruptcies, you have going out of business sales, you have a lot of temporary factors that are preventing inflation from pushing prices higher but these these temporary factors are going to give way and all you're going to get all you're going to be left with is the inflation and it's going to send prices higher and yeah, there's not going to be any question China I, I, is I, exporting I, deflation in an aggressive way yeah. I mean, China there is, is no producing right now yeah, there's a I, tremendous amount of inventory out there we're going to continue okay. to see deflation throughout 2000 there is no look the, there are falling asset prices but that's not deflation you got to look at the money I'm not, supply I'm talking about the, finished money goods. supply is not contracting and it's not going to contract but this but is I, inflation. I, I don't think you know, there's, been no, there's been no evidence of inflation for sure. the past there's years no outside evidence. of raw materials. Open your eyes. Open that, your eyes. It's I, everywhere. Uh, you know, I just don't agree, Peter. There's been raw material inflation, i.e. No, no. raw materials went up a lot in 2008. <laughs> the ability of companies but, to generate price increases globally is almost but, non-existent because, but in price fact, you're dealing with a world labor system price that has movements, prices going down. Price movements are not inflation. They result from inflation. So if you're fixated on price movements, you're missing what's really going on beneath the surface. But you have to focus on not only what's happening with money supply now, but what is going to be happening with money supply in the future, the cost of funding all these misguided bailouts and stimulus it, packages. I, and remember, every time we do a stimulus, it's so. going to stifle the economy, uh, and they're going to want to do an even bigger Jeff stimulus. Jeff Kleintop, one could make the argument that the money supply rising is a very good antidote to the monetary and credit deflation that we've been experiencing for the past 12 to 18 months. And, and Jeff, let me ask you, Peter says that the foreigners are outperforming. Uh, I'm just going to look at this from the bottom, November 20th. Uh, USA, the S&P 500 is up about 11, 12 percent, uh, Jeffrey. Europe is up only 1 percent. Japan is up only 1 percent. The emerging markets are up about the same. In other words, Jeff Klein's out. Are you telling your clients to go abroad? Do you well, think that you there's going to be figures, decoupling? Well, not at all. I, I don't we, see we, the results here. Right. No, we are completely, you know, minimized international weightings. We zeroed out emerging markets somewhere in the middle of last year. We're very happy we did that, and we're sticking with those positions. You know, you've got a, a, a market in Europe that is really struggling. They don't have an ECB that can create money uh, the way we're doing here in the U.S. They can't create a good banking bailout because each country is responsible for its own financial <laughs> system. What? Many of those countries <laughs> can't bail it out. And take a look at China. You know, let's talk about rise of protectionism. Yeah. It's coming up around the world that's going to weigh on trade and exports really you say that as if is creating money were a good thing first. it's a bad when the government creates money they don't create purchasing power they just redistribute it well, they do damage when they create money. i sometimes you got to offset the deflation but no, you let me, don't let me go to zach Car uh, carabelle zachary one of the hotter sectors in recent days has been the health care sector and it's interesting today the drug companies were high as a pistol zachary but you know what so are the hmos and i want to ask you your take on that yeah i mean i think there's a certain amount of trading phenomenon going on here personally i'm not overly fond of those going forward because even with dashel stepping down you are going to get some some significant health care reform legislation whether it's this year or the next and that's going to be a problem for a lot of HMOs I think it's going to be a problem for some of the drug companies which already have intrinsic issues about these uh, about the going off patent and generics you know they don't have great pipelines most of them which is why you've got these huge mega deals in the works so 
you know, short-term trading, it's safe, it's the fact that it's received so little attention in the climate we're in is probably a good thing. Um, and, you know, back to one thing on the banking stuff, this is going to be a lot of discussion, but really, you know, we don't need the bank stocks to do well for the market to do well. We don't, you know, you shouldn't be looking to this as investors. We just need the banking system to provide a certain amount of tech and healthcare are now the leaders in the S&P 500. I know. Banks again, have I'm, come way down, right? I, I just think healthcare, you know, stock specific, sure, as a sector, there's some real issues. Jack, Jack is, top, what's your favorite play right now? Uh, you know, I, I like... I, I would move towards increasing a little bit of risk towards the stock market. Think about small caps here. They make a lot of sense. You like the small caps. Give me a sector in the stock market. Yeah, consumer discretionary and technology. Wow. And Peter Schiff, your best investment play right now. Well, just still get out of cash, particularly the dollar. And, you know, keep it, you know, I still like gold. I'm still buying gold. I, silver, I think, at $12 is a great buy. Which foreign country do you like, Peter? I, you know, I still like the Asian economies. I like Singapore, Hong Kong, anything that's got to do with China. All right, we're going to leave it there. Zachary Carabell, Jeffrey Kleintop, and Peter Schiff. I heard a lot of bottom fishing one way or another.